you know, we placed it at water for a while. So. I drink as much as I can wherever water I have because they don't have to carry so much water. There's ice falls. I, you can't see it. Oh, here's. I don't know if you can see this, but it's a big icicle hanging. A couple feet long. That's how cold it is up here. Oh, All these leaves are icy. Can't really find a place to put the bottle. I don't know if you can see this, but even this the stem of this leaf is all ice. The leaf is flexible, but that stem is just an ice cube. So this climb this morning, it's about a thousand feet of elevation gain. So it started out below freezing today and it's it's actually getting close, colder as I go up. I really don't mind the climbs. It's the it's the uh, downs that, that kill you. Five and a half hours straight down yesterday. It was hard. It's the hardest part of the whole trip so far. But I can handle this. It's a really pretty spot. I wonder if this uh, spring runs year round. As soon as I get some water here, I'll, sh I'll show you this big icicle hanging. It's gonna meet some nice water, fresh water. There were a lot of people at the knock yesterday. Uh, a bunch of people took a zero because it was going to be so cold last night. Decided to spend a the night there. I mean, they were calling for uh, twenty degrees and winds gusting around 35 and you know to be up on top of a mountain and try to try to do a pitch a tent in that and get something to eat it'd be it'd be hard so not impossible but really the other choice why do it pretty easy getting water It's nice not having to uh, watch the news and listen to the coronavirus and, you know, I just got a little blip of it the other day and all the election stuff and people are dropping out and like, you know what, it's so nice to miss that because all year it's just going to be shoved down your throat, whether you like it or not. Got very little to do with our everyday life, but I made it to the top of Chiwa Bald. There's a long way up the last few hundred yards or so was just, <laughs> wow, it was hard. So that's the view. I'm gonna turn the camera on. Nobody wants to see. I keep doing this so I'm like, oh, I, all this hair is growing in like a beard and mustache. And I feel like there's something like in the corners of my mouth and it's like little hairs and it feels like I have something there constantly. It's just driving me crazy. I know it doesn't look cool, but it is what it is. So I'm gonna turn around the camera and see if you can see how nice this is. Wait, I can, I guess I can, oh, there you go. So. Do this slowly so nobody gets dizzy. I mean, you can see for what a great view today. You can see forever. And I'm sure that those are the part of the Smokies that'll be going over 
I mean, I'm sure of it. I mean, what other mountain range is there around here? So I've got another I've got another all day today I'll camp somewhere and then go down into Fontana Dam area and resupply and then I got my permit for to be in the Smokies. I have to complete the Smokies in seven days. So um, I'll be going into there, I think Monday morning. Yeah, and there's gonna be no cell service up there for sure. And so um, there'll be a little bit of a lapse in my posting, it's crap anyway. So nice view, it's probably I don't know 38 degrees right here i mean the sun is warming everything and and uh there's not too much of a wind maybe seven knots right around there so not too cold really warmed up so i'm gonna start heading down good morning Started hiking at uh, about 5 a.m. About an hour and a half before the sun came up. I stayed in a little stealth site in Stayo uh, Gap. I couldn't quite make it to the next shelter area. I hiked 13 and a half miles. Most of it was uphill. Uh, some pretty big climbs and uh was able to they had a water source like off trail at Steo Gap and they had actually built like a little wooden shelter not a shelter but a little enough to get out of the rain at the water source but then if you took the next like there was a gate across a gravel road. So I went past that gate and down this big hill and I found a nice flat spot. A nice flat spot right at the base of a little waterfall. So that was nice. I actually had to use earplugs <laughs> to sleep. It was nice until then. I mean, when I camped, it felt like it was about, I don't know. It felt like it was 65 or 70 degrees in my tent with the sun shining on it. And then uh, it got really cold last night. I don't know what the deal was. Uh, it was the coldest I've been so far. I don't know if I'm sleeping in too many layers and not letting enough um, warm body heat in the bag or what. So um, next time I'll try taking off more clothes. So it lets more body heat in the bag. Maybe I was trapping too much, but um, anyway. I'm gonna try and film when there's, see if I can get a, film when there's a really nice view. Super deep ravine, sun's coming up over there. Really pretty morning. I will see you when there's something to see. Hey, real quick, um, if you ever get stuck out in the middle of nowhere, Hike in the AT and every hiker probably knows this already, but in case you don't, you run out of food and you're desperately hungry. There's always leaf shish kebabs. Here's a pretty cool part of the trail. I'll try to film this without killing myself. It's way at the top of this sort of peak and it just winds through this sort of scrubby stuff and there's the view in the background let's see if I can boop so that's what that kind of looks like pretty nice but this is just like a like a rock scramble through here just go up and over and up and over. Oi. Should be.
should be using for trekking poles, but I thought it was so cool looking that I wanted to share this little part. See, you never know what you're going to get. You never know if it's going to be sort of wide open trail or, you know, just all leafy or rocky or a rock scramble or this kind of cool spot. Here's the other side. There's some kind of lake way down there. Right there is like a little lake. Feel pretty good today. Whoever left that trail magic at Stay Old Gap, they left those fudge brownies and Oreos. And uh, I thought for sure a bear or raccoon would get them overnight. They're in containers or whatever. And there was one giant brownie left and about 15 mint thin Oreos. <laughs> so I packed those out. I ate the brownie on the way up and I've got a few Oreos in my pack. So thanks for the trail magic at Stay O Gap, whoever left that. Much appreciated. I heard earlier in the day that um that there were donuts and Oreos <laughs> and I I just couldn't uh I couldn't go fast enough to get there, although it took me, I don't know, a couple hours and I thought for sure that was all gonna be gone there. There were no donuts, but there sure were some brownies. And I had one the night before, before I made camp. And again, I thought for sure, wow, this is straight down. And I thought for sure that they would be gone. I was gonna camp in this one spot and I swore I thought I saw a giant bear print in the mud. So I actually hiked back out of there and found that really cool little, um, Face the wall for okay. I'm gonna turn this off because this is. I know it doesn't look like it, but it's straight down. Well, this looks like all new scratches in this log. The bears are supposed to be still hibernating. It looks like this log was just dug into. You can see all the new, new pile. Probably looking for bugs. Something in there scratching hard. So, it's like, uh, make sure I don't sleep with my food and I'll uh, hang it in a tree. Looks like the bears are about.